The One Piece manga just kicked off the first major battle of the final saga with Luffy fighting a marine admiral for the very first time in over 500 chapters. On top of that, our all-time favorite secret agent has betrayed the Straw Hats once again and is trying to kill the genius scientist Dr. Vegapunk, but he is now facing Zoro here, who has the chance to once and for all prove to us just how powerful he actually is. And of course, all of this is leading to the massive conclusion of this entire arc, which we were told will be completely shocking the entire world, and I do have some good ideas what this event could actually be. But we of course have to kick things off with the epic clash promise between Luffy and the Marine Admiral Kizaru, because even though we barely got a glimpse of it in this chapter, the start of this fight confirms that Luffy will be taking on the strongest opponent that the world government has sent to the islands. And this is of course a huge moment for Luffy to show us just how far he actually has become since the last time that he faced a marine admiral because in case you've forgotten let's take a look at exactly uh, how much luffy has actually been crushed by the admirals in the past first he met admiral aokiji and was completely frozen solid to the point of nearly dying then the next clash came during the chaos of the saba odi arc where admiral kizaru was sent to take out the straw hats after luffy punched a celestial dragon and although he never directly clashed with luffy the lightman was super close to taking out the entire Straw Hat crew. But then when we reach the legendary war at Marineford, where Kizaru took an active role to stop Luffy from freeing Ace, in fact, he shot Luffy with a laser beam, sent him flying with a light speed kick twice, and then sniped the key to Ace's handcuffs right out of Luffy's hands. But of course, that's not even the worst that an admiral has ever done to Luffy, because at the end of the war, Admiral Akainu killed his brother Ace, which just absolutely broke Luffy. So yeah, Luffy has a huge score to settle with these marine admirals, which makes this fight of course even more interesting than it already is. Because on top of the actual battle to save the Vegapunks and escape from the island to Elbaf, there are now both personal and world-altering stakes at play here. So let's actually go through all of the scenarios of what could happen based on the outcome of this fight. And first off, no matter what, I really don't think think that this will be an easy fight for either candidate. Kizaru is one of the OG admirals and his devil fruit is just insanely powerful. Plus he's basically guaranteed to show off some really insane hockey abilities as well that have never been shown before, come on. But again, Luffy now has awakened his devil fruit plus learned advanced form of all three types of hockey and honestly, after defeating Kaido, I do think that Luffy should theoretically at least be able to defeat Kizaru as well. Personally, I've always power scaled the Yonko a little bit higher than the Admiral, so since Luffy defeated Kaido, then theoretically that should make him stronger than Kizaru. And if that of course were to happen, it would certainly be a huge blow to the world government overall, as it would be the very first time that an Admiral was actually defeated by a pirate in the story. And yeah, I'm not including the fight with Green Bull where he ran away from Shanks at the end of Wano, which never really got finished and was just kind of of being a coward, I guess. So this outcome would make Luffy's reputation skyrocket even more and significantly weaken the overall threat of the Marines. However, as we all know, fights in One Piece are heavily dependent on matchups as well. So just because one character should be stronger than the other doesn't really mean that they will actually win. Though honestly, Kizaru's fighting style and Devil Fruit abilities don't really seem like the type that would give Luffy a super hard time. I mean, it's nothing super crazy or tricky or confusing, for example, like the slow beams that nearly caused Luffy to lose in Long Ring, Long Island, because essentially Kizaru fights with shooting really strong light beams, making a light sword, or attacking with light speed kicks and punches, as far as we know at least. And so, all of these are extraordinarily powerful, yeah, but pretty straightforward attacks in some way. And so, especially with Luffy's Awakening, I'm just wondering if he'll just be able to grab the light attacks and throw them back, similar to how he was able to catch the lightning during Wano. Plus, since he can now actually make his environment rubber as well, he should be able to bounce any light beams back pretty easily in theory. So all this would mean that Luffy could be defeating Kizaru by the end of this arc, either he dies, not by Luffy of course, or the Straw Hats could even capture an admiral, who knows. But, and yeah, there was gonna be a but to this, I do personally actually think that the most likely outcome
outcome here will be some sort of draw. After all, it is classic Oda style to show us a clash of two insanely powerful characters and then something happens to disrupt the fight to kind of push it to a later point in the story. And so since Luffy's main goal at the moment is to escape with his crew and new friends, I could easily see the fight with Kizaru ending quite early and then the Straw Hats manage to escape off the island. Plus, I don't really think that Kizaru has the type of personality to just go and hunt them down himself as long as he can complete his mission of retrieving the Vegapunk tech, which we'll talk about more in just a minute. But of course, if we're considering a Luffy win and a draw, then we must also seriously think about what might happen if Kizaru actually wins this fight. Because we've actually never seen Kizaru go all out in the story before, so he may very well have been holding back all this time. And so maybe he actually overwhelms Luffy with his speed and power, hidden hockey, other abilities we don't know about, and if this were to happen, it would be devastating for Luffy and the crew, of course. They might not be able to escape, or at least if Luffy is taken out, then Kizaru might just go crazy attacking the rest of the crew, and my god, that could lead to a seriously bad situation for the Straw Hats and their friends. I could actually even see someone dying in the scenario if Luffy isn't there to protect them, possibly a Vegapunk, or who knows, even one of the Straw Hats. And, and if that were to happen, it would of course have to mean that Luffy needs way more power-ups in the future since he will eventually have to fight with the Admirals on a level and take down the world government. And now you might be thinking that these three are all the options that we have, but there is actually one more possibility to this fight that we actually haven't discussed yet, which is that with all of the crazy technology here on Ekin Island, someone besides Luffy may actually end up fighting against Kizaru with Luffy or instead of Luffy. Because in case you've forgotten, we were actually shown twice the perfect weapons to fight against the Light Fruit user at the start of this arc. One, where this version of Vegapunk here showed off the awesome gloves that let anyone physically attack Light by punching a hologram. And I mean, what better way for someone without hockey to actually fight against a Light Devil Fruit user? And that's not all, because secondly, Bonnie also found this ridiculous actual lightsaber that I would just love to see actually used in a fight against the Admiral. So could we actually see some of the other Straw Hats or someone else fight alongside or instead of Luffy against Kizaru, or maybe even the different versions of Vegapunk sacrificing themselves to let the rest of the Straw Hats escape. I mean, it's certainly possible, but if this is the case, then what other incredible event could shock the entire world then? Well, there are quite a few options because we have to remember that the world government's main goal here in the first place is that they came to kill Vegapunk, but we also recently learned that they're now also after the Mother Flame technology, which is something that helps them fuel the super weapon that destroyed this entire island here. But at the same time, that wouldn't exactly seem like something that would make world-shattering news on its own, because if Vegapunk was killed or the government got their hands on this super powerful weapon, I'm pretty sure that they would manage to cover that up and the world doesn't even know about the Mother Flame in the first place. And so if it's neither of those, then I really only see two other options here and wow. Both of them would seriously change everything for the One Piece world. Number one, can you imagine the reaction if the Gorosei member sent to Ekhead Island, since Saturn here, was actually killed or captured during this battle? It would be simply unimaginable and likely cause chaos throughout the entire world government. I mean, we do know that he has some sort of insane powers from the flashback chapters at the Reverie, but we don't really know at all how strong he truly is. So if he gets into a fight, think could go very badly. Or the other option involves another group of pirates who have been mysteriously missing from these last couple of chapters. And that's because you might have forgotten, but we actually got a glimpse of a Blackbeard ship heading towards Eckhead Island and assassinating a top member of the Gorosei and then blaming it on the Straw Hats seems exactly like the kind of thing that they would do to cause chaos throughout the world. And I would definitely see this happening whether Blackbeard himself is here or it's just other people from his crew sneaking in. And speaking of that crew, there is also the possibility that Katarina the One, who actually has eaten a shape-shifting style devil fruit, could currently be posing as an imposter on the island right now. But whether their goal is to kill the Gorosei, steal Luffy's Poneglyph copies, or something else like <coughs> capturing Robin, we will have to wait to actually find out. But the other world-shaking event that could happen is that all of the super-secret historical research that Vegapunk has collected could be 
be shared with the world. Okay, hear me out. I mean, we do know that punk records is basically something like the internet. So what if something happened and, I don't know, Vegapunk pushed a magical red button that uh, subscribed him to this channel for more uh, And of course, it would mostly send all of that super secret data to the entire world. This would literally be the world government's worst nightmare right now because Vegapunk has information about the Void Century and the Ancient Kingdoms and secret tech that he developed for the government itself. And so if that's not enough to shake up the entire world, then I really don't know what would be. However, while all of this is speculation, we do know that Luchi is right now actively trying to kill Vegapunk once again and Zoro has stepped up to stop him. Which honestly is a little bit disappointing for both characters. I mean, Luchi got washed by Luffy, so now he has to fight the second in command, and I personally feel like Zoro should handle Luchi no problem at all since he has unlocked his advanced Conqueror's Hockey too. On the other hand, Luchi is an awakened zone fruit user now, so we'll have to see how much of an actual fight Oda decides to make this. But really, the fight that I and I think most of you also would have loved to see instead would have been Zoro against Kizaru. That sure would have been way more of a challenge than Luchi and would have pushed Zoro literally to his ultimate limits. And even though I desperately want to see this fight, I actually don't think that Zoro would win at the moment at least, which also makes me wonder how Zoro is going to grow stronger in the future here on out. And so maybe to help him fight the top tiers of the story, he might in the end need a completely different power up, such as an ultra powerful devil fruit. And if you want to see just how insane the story would get if Zoro actually ate a devil fruit, you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.